Hi, my name's Irrelevant, and I've been waiting all day for Purolator. I guess I can finally leave the house now, but now I'm gonna do the unboxing video I had planned. And I forgot to turn on all the lights. So, let us see what is in here. You probably already know because it's in the name of the video, but this is something that I've been shopping around for for over a month now. <laughs> Trying to solve certain problems because my Z50 has proven to be one of the most unreliable cameras I've ever owned. It's a good camera, just doesn't tell you when it stops recording and I've lost a lot of footage. And then my other cameras, well, they're just missing so many features I need to do this right. Oh, why is there like weird scratchiness on the bottom of the box? Hmm. Didn't say used, did it? I got this from Best Buy. They're the only ones who seem to have it in stock. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Always with the dinky cable. And then there's the little puff you hear so much about. And then hiding under here is a battery. The tiny, 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 tiny. Oh my God, it's tiny. I guess it's a little bit bigger than the Nikon batteries. Yeah, 1240 milliamps. It's just a little bit bigger than the Nikon batteries I'm used to. Oh boy. Whoa, this thing's heavy. It feels like a little brick. Oh, ho, 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 ho. wow. It's a spectacle. Just looking at this thing, it's like, this thing looks serious. Okay, now, um, cable. Cable, cable, cable. One incredibly frustrating problem I've been dealing with is not being able to power my cameras externally. The Z50 is running off battery power. They do not make a battery adapter for it, yet even though there is a little hole, you can tell they have provisions for it. But this guy apparently will run off its USB port. So, first startup, let's see if that's true. I have no battery in it right now. Let's check, is there a battery? There is no battery. Plug it in and turn it on. Oh, oh. Wait, I don't think this port's all the way in there because it can't fit in the little hole. What if we use the cable it came with, even though it looks kind of really short and dinky. Let's see how long is this guy. Oh, yeah, that's, that's real long, bud. It's okay, you don't buy it for the cables anyway. Okay, that guy fits nice. Let's see if that makes a difference. It's quite possible that someone has lied. A review stated it could run infinitely off USB power. Now maybe like phones it can, but it still has to have the battery. Let's see, is there a blinky light telling me it's charging now? Oh, yeah, right there. First setup, English. Set date time, okay. New York Bogota, sure. Daylight savings, sure. Wow, the controls are very interesting. Date and time not set. What is it right now? It's not January. Whoa, it just jumped around on me. It is currently the 30th of July. Oh, geez, okay, that didn't do what I expected it to do. It is the 2020. Oh, I got that right. Oh, it was made this year. I guess technically, can we go back in time? Oh boy, there it goes again. I don't know what's happening here. I just accidentally jump out of it. Hey, look at that, that's funny. It knows it's made in 2020, so it knows it can't possibly be any later than that earlier than that actually. 2037 is the max number this goes to? A 17 year life expectancy? Well, I guess if you're still using this camera in 17 years, hmm. And because I've been waiting all day for Puro, it is now 5 p.m. Hey, how come I can't set it? Oh, great. So you're telling me I have to go all the way through this. All right, well, there we go. Date format, that is backwards. Year, month, day. That is like metric equivalent. Enter, how do we, okay, so. Imaging, go to Sony, applicable. It's trying to spam you? This is the first time I've ever started up a new device and it tried to sell me something. Mind you, edge imaging, who knows if this is actually selling me something. And it turned on, and it has no card, and it has 2.8, and it has a whole bunch of stuff turned on. What the heck, I didn't even touch anything and it focused. What happened here? Oh, it's just a very soft touch button. All right, so that flips around now. An important feature that my little Nikons didn't have, that this thing's supposed to have, and that's the ability to plug it into an external monitor or recorder. 
supposed to have a clean HDMI output. So here's my micro HDMI cable. I'm gonna jack that into the back of my monitor now. Now let's see what happens. When I plug it into my Nikons, they turn off and go into playback mode. Oh, the screen just went dark. The monitor is up, but the screen went dark though. That's kind of weird. Well, I guess I don't need it to display. I'm gonna mostly be using this overhead to do this overhead perspective. I don't really need it to display. That's actually nice, you know? Uh, that's annoying, some of these cameras, I can't control what is gonna do what. The Nikon, if you plug into HDMI and turn on a live view on the computer, it cuts off HDMI. But the rear screen's always running. Obviously, if I have an HDMI plugged into the camera and I have a friggin' live view going on the computer, I don't need the rear screen, now do I? This is actually maybe starting to get um, into the realm of intelligence that I was coming to expect from cameras. And if I go menu, everything's happening completely on the screen. Now, one thing I'm noticing is all the actual gobbledygook and the image is a bit small. So... That means there might actually be a setting in here that lets me select what I want the output to do. And that would be great because sometimes I do want all that crap on the screen, but it is supposed to do clean HDMI output. Um, there is a lot going on here. Auto power off temperature. That's one of the big ones they talk about. This guy doesn't have the 30 minute timer. It's supposed to be able to record continuously. My Nikon, my Z50, it shuts off and it doesn't tell you. You have no idea how much footage I've lost because this frigging camera doesn't communicate with you. Now on this one, there's no timer and it says if you set it to high, it will not turn off when recording 4K continuously. I don't really plan, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be doing 4K with this because I broadcast in 1080. I have some trickery where I wanna do 4K so that I can virtually zoom in and post. But for the most part, if this thing can run continuously with 1080p, wow, that's gonna be winning. HDMI settings, HDMI resolution, auto. Output, 60p, okay. Display info off, is that what I'm looking for? What's TC? Control for HDMI. Now let's see if this changed. Screen is turned on and it is clean and I still have my menus on the camera. It's weird, the aspect ratio I'm getting out of that screen is like, you see that? It's square, I'm not getting widescreen. Rec control. You know what? I've heard of rec control. If you use an Atomos recorder, they kind of synchronize. So like the camera knows it's running a recorder. And maybe you press record here and it starts the recorder. This is the first time I've, 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 I've launched one of these machines and found more features than I knew what they were. Nikon, I friggin hammered through it in a few minutes and oh, there's everything. So here's the other thing that I'm looking for. One of the more important things, file format, HD, okay, okay. So I don't want 60p, I want 30p, 50 megabits a second. 30p, 16 megabits a second. 16 megabits a second is a bit low. Like my Nikon does 24 megabits a second and that's the minimum amount of detail I want, but 50 megabits a second, that's, uh, that's up there. Like that's gotta look good, I would imagine, or else what's the point? Okay, let's get out of here. Now I wanna try to find a very basic feature on this. I wanna try to find white balance. What's the quickest way I can access white balance? FN? Oh, okay, we have a custom menu. White balance is locked out. I think that's because uh, it's probably in full auto mode. There's the mode button. And then I'm gonna put it in program. Now if I press FN, ah, there we go, white balance. Okay, oh, I can fine tune it, that's perfect. So let me dial in the same settings I use on my Nikon and see what happens. FN, white balance, go down, 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 warm, cool, white, day, flash, underwater, select color temperature. Wait, okay, the controls are a little not what I'm used to. Come on, give me FN back, give me this. How do I tune it? Sideways. In this room, it's 5400K magenta 2. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Not bad, not bad. It looks pretty close to what I'm seeing on my other screen there. That's great. I like it when a camera has a highly customizable white balance because that means I can do my color grading on camera and then just hit record. And then in post, I don't have to do color grading again. I understand easier how to dial in a white balance based on color temperature than I do know how to use those little joystick controls. You know what I mean? So I should swap a card in here. All right, to get a random 32 the gig card. Let's stick that in there at the bottom. This is one thing they warn you about. You see where the little nubbin is? The HDMI just went dark. Oh, preparing image database file. Okay, whatever that is. Oh, there's probably already stuff in that card and it's like importing, importing. They warn you about this guy right here because you see that's where the little nubbin for the tripod goes. And once you've installed a tripod, good luck getting access to that door. All right, so let's just unplug all this bollocks. Hopefully there's a fair amount of power left in the battery. Boop. Okay, that's something that's weird. Oh, the anti-shake is pretty good on here. Let's try the defocus mode. Defocus. <laughs> Clear, defocus. Clear. Okay, it does that weird crappy thing, right? Look at it now. Now watch when I turn it off. It goes big, right? Basically, it's it's ready to take a photo. And then when you uh, start record, it crops down to the 16-9 aspect ratio. Now, if you have that going on with your camera, there's a really easy workaround for that. Really easy workaround. Basically, you go into your photo mode. Go to uh, image size or no, that's what it is on other cameras. Go to aspect ratio. Set your photo aspect ratio to 16.9, and then you're gonna find, there you go, it displays in the same aspect ratio. Now, the question is, let's see when I start recording how much it crops. It does have a crop, but that's because it, it, it seems to have active, um, active stabilization on right now. Cameras always crop with active stabilization. Basically the idea is they, they use less of the image sensor and the camera can read how you're pivoting it around and then I don't know how to explain it. Okay, the world famous vlogging, blogging, clogging, plonking, plinging, plonging, pinging, tonging, bunging, dunta cam. It's tracking my eye. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I heard about the beauty filter. My, my face looks abnormally smooth, and I don't know if this screen is making me look pale, but it's making me look pale. And there's a tally light. Look at that, that's great. That red light, oh, oh, you mean I can tell when the camera's running? Oh, wow, what a novel idea. Y you wouldn't think that a, a, a nice Z50 would have something like that on it, would you? No, it just doesn't tell you what it's doing. I have to look over at that timer. Luckily I can see the timer now, six minutes left. That timer's gonna lapse and I'm gonna lose footage. Oh wow. Let's do some magnum. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it, it works. It works. It feels like a camera in its price point. I have a timer cut counting down here. It says one minute, 57 seconds. What's that all about? Oh, that's halo effect is what that is. I'm expecting a timer to be screwing me up, but no, it's a timer counting up. Oh, such a novel idea. A camera that can, doesn't have a timer. Oh, that, that's almost exciting to me that I don't have a, a record timer now to, to deal with. I got four minutes left on this camera, two minutes left on this camera. This one doesn't have a record timer, but it's old and, and looks arse-ish. I forgot to look for the picture profiles. Oh yeah, it turns on and off automatically with the screen. So I'm gonna go into, I guess, maybe the um, FN menu again. There's an ND filter. That's gonna be great for shooting outside. What's this box? Product showcase. Oh yeah, that's the instant quick focus. It says to use a tripod, that won't be a problem. Creative style, vivid, portrait, 
Portrait is what I usually use because it gives a flatter image. Sunset, black and white, sepia. Ah, and then you can fine tune saturation, contrast, sharpness. Easily accessible. I don't know if that looks nice to you, but that just... Ooh, the zoom is really slow while it's running. <clears throat> now show me what you got. Ah, I look less blown out and pale. It also looks like it's making me look skinnier. Oh, it's got the zebra lines. Not false color, though. Oh, you can change what all the buttons do. Like the C2 here. Okay. I like that. Gonna have to figure out what I, I like it to do, but... What the hell is proxy recording? Doesn't say. Oh, the garbage button. Ah, there it is. A lot of the new cameras, they have like little helps and little question marks. You press the button, it tells you what it does. You can simultaneously record at a low bit rate and original. Ah, this is for editing. Sometimes when you're trying to edit in the timeline using a full resolution video, it um, it goes rather slow. It's more of a problem with 4K than 1080p, especially if you have a good computer. But, you know, some cameras, I know my Panasonic, my computer has a hard time rendering in real time, or at least the program does, so I have to set up proxy videos for it. Ah, the garbage button turns product showcase on and off. Uh, what happens if I press this way? Easy exposure compensation. Uh, shooting mode. ISO is over there. Oh, okay. That's interesting. It's not labeled. Disp up. Changes what you see. Oh, it's got the level. That's cool. Hey, where's a uh, program shift on this? Ah, okay. Spin the dial. That's program shift. But I am getting a battery warning. So they say, if you plug in, oh, it's got HDMI out. It's got micro USB, not USB-C though. And it has a microphone in. That's how you know it's a real camera. There's a movie specific mode. What's that do? I'm gonna have to spend some more time with this thing and uh, see what happens. This is gonna solve some problems and allow me to shoot in the quality that I intend, or so the reviews say. <laughs> and the little wind puff. Look at that cute. Look at Oh. I've got the remote for it on order too. All right, so this has been a, a very monumental day because now I shouldn't be having any of the problems I was having before. I was having all sorts of problems between the timers and crappy quality cameras. These Nikons, like this SS9900, it's been good to me, but I wanted to plug the HDMI out turns off the camera. Would you believe that? I wanted to have it as my overhead cam and then be able to monitor it out. Can't, no. This thing's not a real boy. Another good thing about this guy, unlike the Nikon, is you can also get cheap generic batteries for it. Or just non-generic batteries for cheaper. Either way, this is gonna be a nice tool. But I think that's enough for today. I need to go and learn more about this equipment that I have and start putting it to use.